Welcome to episode 209 of Clarity Compressed. I am Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between winning and losing. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So last night, uh, the Los Angeles Rams edged out the Cincinnati Bengals uh, 23 to 20 in Super Bowl 56. You know, the thing that struck me is that it was the Bengals' first time, not just to the Super Bowl, to the playoffs in over 20 years. So I think it was like 23 years, so even some of this audience wasn't even born yet. The last time the Bengals were in the playoffs, not only did they make it to the playoffs, made it to the playoffs, made it through the playoffs into the Super Bowl, and played a tough game. It was a game that was back and forth and back and forth. And um, it was a great football game. It wasn't one of those blowouts that happens sometimes with the Super Bowl. makes it boring. It was engaging. It was fun. And guess what? They lost by, like, in the last few seconds, they just couldn't keep it together. The game came down to the final few seconds, and the margin between the winner and the loser was razor thin. The Olympics are also going on right now, and it has me thinking, these, the Olympics, there are so many sports in there that are often decided gold, silver, bronze, or no medal at all can be decided by a fraction of a second. Now, if you know that the amount of training and preparation that goes into this type of athletic um, competition in the Super Bowl, this is a game that so many people, so many athletes, so many coaches, so many trainers have been preparing for their entire life to get to this level, to have a shot to actually win and be a champion. And they didn't last night. The Bengals didn't last night. And so many Olympic athletes train day in, day out for years, disciplined diets, waking up at 3 a.m., doing just things that most of us would consider completely ridiculous with their lives because of the dedication to improving and being the best at their sport only to lose by a fraction of a second. Think even sports like NASCAR, right? You have all of these, um, all these mechanical adjustments, all of these um, unbelievable attentions to detail that where the margin of error and the margin of victory defeat are determined by this much. So I was thinking, what is the difference between the winners and the losers? What is the difference? Because if it was just judged on basis of whether or not you won or you lost, people's lives would be destroyed. Sometimes people's lives are destroyed when they lose but I think that there's something much greater than the winning and the losing for a lot of folks. Um, also for a lot of us that, you know, our lives and whether you get a deal or don't get a deal or your business fails or your business succeeds, a lot of those are just indicators of the game we are actually playing. You know, last night I had some friends over and amongst the friends, um, you know, we had 12 kids between us, right? And all age ranges from three months old all the way up to 20, uh, 20 years old, right? We had um, a pastor, an attorney, um, a charge nurse, a lead nurse, uh, a doctorate in education, right? My family, my wife and I were entrepreneurs building businesses. So we have all these different, uh, a big variety of missions in life and things we put our hands to and things we put our work to. And all those wins, losses, wins, losses, what's the difference between a win and a loss? It's often like this. But when I look at the families and I look at the kids, it reminds me of Simon Sinek's um, idea of the infinite game and the infinite game being far beyond what is just in the moment. Now, that infinite game means that there is no beginning and end. The rules are constantly changing, right? We constantly have to adjust. And it's not about whether you win or lost, but it's whether you made improvement it's whether you're better off than you were yesterday, you're moving forward or you're moving backwards in the infinite game. And the infinite game is full of a lot of finite games, like a Super Bowl game, like a business deal, right? Like a big trial in a case. 
all these game, all these finite games that have a defined beginning, middle, and end, that have a defined winner and loser, defined rules that everyone has to play with that stay the same. And so this infinite game, game that we're playing is actually full a lot of these finite games. And it's important that we don't confuse the two. And that was really what was, um, is really kind of pushing my thinking this morning because for all the athletes in the game last night and the people that were over my house and these Olympic athletes, right? I'm grouping them all together in one group because most of them have the healthy perspective that it is not a finite game. It is an infinite game. Now, what happens when we kind of juxtapose the two? What happens when we think all of life is kind of surrounded in this finite game? Well, that's when you see people kind of go off the deep end, right? That's when you see people who have their identity based on whether or not they won or lost a finite game go downhill and, you know, kind of dip into bad habits and addictive habits and self-loathing and all of these destructive mentalities that will ruin a person. It's because the difference between winning and losing to them was wrapped up in this finite game. Happens to all of us. I'm not pointing the finger, right? A lot of times this couldn't be just a game like a, like a sports game or a business deal. It could be a relationship, right? You see the relationship as the finite game, especially when you're younger, right? It's a finite game. And if you lose that relationship, feel like you lost the whole entire thing. And I hope that, um, you know, we can broaden our perspective beyond that. I hope that by talking about this, I help you broaden your perspective, that I, even through talking about it, help broaden my own perspective because the finite games, the ones we think are so important at the time, if we can only have clarity in that moment to realize, yes, it's important. Yes, it's disappointing if we don't win, but that's not the end. That's just another step in the finite game. That's just an opportunity to sharp or to you know smooth off the rough edges. That's an opportunity to grow. I heard a quote last week uh, by uh, a speaker many of you may know. His name is Les Brown, and he says, "Don't say I'm having a bad day. Say I'm having a character building day." Right? And framing that up in your mind is really an infinite game mindset, because the finite games, winning and losing those give you the opportunity to build the character you want to work into your infinite game. So the same is true, actually. The same is true if you win the finite game because it's very easy to win the finite game and have that kind of mountaintop experience and feel like I have it down. I have it together. I'm the best in the world. I'm the best. I won the sales deal. I'm the best salesman. I'm the best parent because your kid did something great that you're proud of. But also if you sit on that, just like as unhealthy as it is if you sit on um, the loss and make it everything about the loss, if you make everything about the win in the finite game, it's also going to destroy your infinite game. It's going to destroy your ability to get better and to improve and to make sure that you're you know, doing better on your blind spots and doing better with your perspective because you know what happens to people that, that sit on, rest on their laurels? Resting on your laurels means like, I won something and now I'm gonna just you know, kind of bask in that finite game mindset of that win being like everything I need to get through in life, right? Like a one hit wonder. Most one hit wonders don't do so well in the end. So I hope that today I can help you broaden your perspective a little bit, give you a little more clarity on what game we're actually playing. Are we playing to win? Are we playing to lose? Or are we actually be playing for something much greater than that? So I hope that you will uh, go on that journey with me. I hope that you will keep playing the game with me today. I'm so grateful that you did right now. And let's walk forward in clarity together. Let's broaden our perspective and let's play that infinite game together. I'll see you next week.